Hi friends, welcome back. So in this video series, we are going to cover each and every concept on static timing analysis with proper and very very good examples. So first of all, what is static timing analysis? So static timing analysis is a method of validating the timing performance of a circuit by checking all the possible timing paths for violation of timing constraints. So first of all here, if you ask me what is the meaning of timing performance? So in simple words, the timing performance here means if you have a design and the design is supposed to work for example at 1 megahertz frequency. So if now the question is whether your design will work at 1 megahertz frequency or not. So how will you make sure? So here the ST tools or the ST analysis comes in picture where the static timing analysis which is done using some static timing analysis EDA tools, they perform some kind of checks and make sure that this particular designs will work at 1 megahertz frequency or not. So the static timing analysis when we provide the design and all the related collaterals which we are going to cover in our next videos basically what the STA tool need as an input to perform the static timing analysis on a particular design once we provide all that information to the STA tool then what the SDA tool will do first of all it will break the design into different timing paths so here first of all we are going to see what are all those timing paths in the designs which STA tool will basically consider for the timing checks. And yes, the synopsis prime time is the popular STA tool used in the VLSI industry. So if you can see here, we have taken one example circuit. So what STA tool does is whenever the STA tool performs the static timing analysis on a particular design, it breaks the circuit into different different timing paths and the minimum unit or we can say the minimum circuit unit which the STA tool uses to analyze is nothing but whatever you can see on this screen. So however big design it is, the STA tool will break the design into a number of this minimum circuit. So this is basically you can call the basic unit unit of ST analysis. So if we provide the circuit net list of this circuit whatever see on the screen to the SDA tool what the SDA tool is going to do first is it is going to break this design into four types of timing paths. Now let's understand each and every path in details. So the first path the SDA tool will consider for the analysis is this path. This is input pin of the design and the path from this input pin to the data pin of the sequential element. So this is one path the STA tool will consider for the analysis. So what are the different kind of checks which will which STA tool will perform to analyze, analyze this path? We are going to see those in our next video. But in this video just focus on what are all paths the SDA tool will consider for the timing analysis. So the path 1 is from input to the data pin of the sequential elements. The path 2 which the SDA tool will consider for the analysis is the clock pin of the sequential elements to the data pin of the next sequential element. The third path is the clock pin of the sequential element to the output pin of the design. Okay, And the fourth path is nothing but input pin to output pin. So there might be some combinational logic. So this logic here shown is nothing but combinational logic. So there might be some combinational logic between input and output. So the SDA tool will consider that path as well for the timing analysis. Okay. Now each path mentioned here has start point and its end point. So if you see here the start point is input pin here in the path 1 it is the input pin of the design. In path 2 the start point is clock pin of the sequential element. And in path 3 also the start point is clock pin of the sequential element and in path 4 start point is input port. And what is the end point? If we consider path 1, the end point for path 1 is nothing but data pin of the sequential element. For path 2, it is also data pin of the sequential element. For path, for path 3, it is output pin. And for, for path 4 as well, it is the output pin. So every path mentioned here will have a start point and its end point. Now let's see what do we call these paths. So these paths are called with some specific name. For example, if we see path 1. So path 1 is nothing but input pin to data pin of the register. 
so this path is basically called input to register path okay so if you see here path one path one is nothing but into reg path where the start point is input port of the design and the end point is data input pin of the flip flop likewise if you see path two path two is nothing but the clock pin of the sequential element to the data pin of the second sequential element so this path is basically going from register to register starting from a register and ending at the register so this is called register to register path where the start point is clock pin of the flip flop or latch and the end point is data input pin of flip flop or latch for path 3 path 3 the start point is clock pin of the flip flop and the end point is output port so this path can be called as so this path is basically starting from a register and ending at a output port so this is called as register to out path and similarly the fourth path is starting from a input port and basically ending at input port uh, at output port so this is called as input to output path where the start start point is input port of the design and the end point is also output port of the design so whatever the timing paths we saw in the slide in slide number uh, 2 or 3 or 4 these paths are basically called data path okay so here if you see the data is basically traveling from input to the data pin of the flow then for the second path at this clock edge basically at this clock edge whether it is uh, rising or, fall, or falling so in this case let's consider uh, rising so at the rising whenever the rising clock edge happens the date the data from here will travel uh, from this register to this register similarly here whenever the rising edge happens at the clock edge the data will travel from deep into deep into the q pin of the flip flop and then from q pin to the output port and similarly in fourth path also the data will be traveling from input through some combinational logic to the output port so these four full paths are called data paths now let's see what are some another paths also which sda tool will consider for the timing analysis so the sda tool will also consider the asynchronous paths so if you see here the path one path one is nothing but input port to the reset or there might be some set pin of the flip flop also so if the reset and set if the flip flop flip flop has asynchronous reset or set pins the data which will come from some input port to the reset or set which are asynchronous pins of the flip flop that path is called asynchronous path and the ST tool will also consider that path for the timing analysis. Don't worry, in the next video, we are going to see what are all the checks which, will, which ST tool will perform for these asynchronous paths. So in the previous slides, where we saw these all paths, these all paths are synchronous paths. Always remember, these all paths are synchronous paths. The timing calculations of these paths will be performed based on the clock time period. Now, this path one is asynchronous path st tool also consider this path for the timing analysis now here is the path 2 the path 2 is nothing but basically it is coming from the clock port and it is going to the all the clock pins of the flip flops so st tool also calculates the delay on this path to perform the timing checks so this delay calculation of this path 2 is also important in order to perform the timing analysis of synchronous data paths. So whenever we are performing synchronous timing analysis along with the data path delays, we need this clock path delay as well to perform the timing charts. We are going to see all this in details. So the third path, the third path is nothing but input pin input port to the sales some sales and this sale is nothing but a clock getter cell see you see here the first input of this and gate is nothing but the clock fin and the second input of this and gate is nothing but some enable signal so if you see whenever the enable is zero the clock output clock one gated will be zero once the whenever the enable is high then only the clock one will be passed to the clock one gated so this is basically a clock getter cell so the st tool also performs the clock getting checks now what is clock getting checks what all the st tool needs to consider in order to make sure that this 
glow getting will work as intended we are going to see all this in our next chapters so as we discussed the clock path the path 2 is the clock path and it it is needed for setup and hold timing constraints the setup and hold timings are synchronous timing constraints we are going to study in the in our next chapters the clock getting path for clock getter setup and hold checks what is the setup and hold checks on don't and the hold checks don't worry we are going to study in our next chapters so the clock getting path or the clock getting check is also needed in order to make sure that our clock getter is performing as intended then we have the asynchronous path path 1 is the asynchronous path so this is basically from an input port to an asynchronous site or reset or clear pin of a sequential element so this asynchronous path is also needed in order to perform the recovery and removal timing checks recovery and remove, removals are like asynchronous timing checks we are going to study in our next chapters so now let's see in the asic design flow how we perform the st analysis so in asic flow we design our rtl according to the specifications then we create the synopsis design constraints sta constraints as per the design specifications then we perform the synthesis with sta engine and then we perform the sta analysis basically we check if there are any static timing analysis violations or not if there are violations we are again going to synthesize the design with proper constraints or if there is any updates needs in the rtl then if there is no sta violations at this stage after design synthesis if the sta report is clean we are going to do the placement and routing with sta enabled and then with the place and route netlist we are going to perform the static timing analysis again and going to see if there are any violations if there are no violations we will go for the further asic flow if there are any violations we will again check our placement and routing netlist and then again we will perform the static timing analysis so this is how the st is performed in the typical asic design hope the first part of static timing analysis series which is basically on capturing what are all the timing paths the st tool considers for the static timing analysis checks if there are any queries please write down in the comment section and if you like the contents please hit the like button also please do subscribe to this channel and enable the notification so that you will get notified as soon as i upload the next video on this series thank you very much